Hello everybody, this is David coming at you with another video. Um, I just received my Nexus A7 in the mail today. I bought one off of eBay a few days ago for a good deal. And so I'm going to do a project on the, on the Nexus A7. Uh, but since I've been using the B, uh, Basis 3 for a lot of projects, I'm going to compare the Basis 3 to the Nexus A7. And then part two of this video, I'm going to show you a stopwatch and timer I made on the Nexus A7 now that I have uh, two sets of seven segment displays on the Nexus A7. So, all right, so looking at the variants of the Arctic 7. So on the Basis 3, it comes with the, the 35T and this is the stats on that. So this many logic cells, DSP, uh, DSP slices, BRAM, um, IO pins, uh, gigabit transceivers. And then there's actually two different variants of the Nexus A7. It comes in the 50T and the 100T version. And you can see what you get uh, based on that. I bought the 50T, of course the 100T has more stuff, so it's more expensive. I got the 50T, but you can see in comparison, I got more logic cells, more DSP slices, and um, uh, another th um, 900, on the uh, on the block memory now let me go ahead and show you the boards I got them sitting right here okay so here's the basis 3 and the Nexus A7 like I said I got the 50T this has a, a 35T but the difference is it's like so everything that the basis 3 has the Nexus A, A7 has and then some it has it also has a uh, so you know, it has the switches, the LEDs. It's got double the seven segment displays. It has the five buttons. This one actually has a, a dedicated reset button here. So, you know, usually using, um, you know, button C on the basis three for a reset. It has a button you can use for a reset. Uh, I'll get more into this, but I just want to, you know, I'll probably be doing some videos on the Nexus A7, but most of the videos I'll be doing, especially the VGA, can you can still do it on the basis three but the reason why i like the nexus a7 is i'm going to be getting the video games uh programming and stuff and up here it has the uh this says mono audio out so i'll be able to add some audio to my games and then it has some other cool peripher uh peripherals on here it has the temperature sensor right here uh it has two rgb leds right here it has a microphone here you can do programming uart through here uh, it has SD card, mini SD card uh, on the back, so you can actually program it like the Basis 3 from USB, but also from the SD card using a jumper right here. Uh, it also has all the same stuff through the ho uh, USB host as the Basis 3 does. You can do PS or RS-232 and PS2 through there. This also has Ethernet, which would be pretty cool to mess with. Um, it has an extra P mod, so it has the analog to digital converter and then an extra P mod on the basis three, but it's pretty much the same, just more stuff on here. And this, like I said, it's the logic I'm going to do on here is the same you can do on here in most cases. All right, well, let me tell you about the project that I made on here. I'm going to make the stopwatch timer now that I have all these segments. So um, over here on these two will be hundreds of seconds. This will be, uh, you know, seconds and you know seconds this will be minutes and this will be hours so let me take you over to the diagram of what i did okay here's the block diagram for the stopwatch uh, timer circuit so like i said i'm gonna have hundreds of seconds seconds and minutes and hours and just like i did before with previous ones with the vga clock and also the seven segment display. I need these values to be uh, BCD values for the seven segment display. So I, I just went ahead and created a binary to BCD converter. All the outputs are being converted before outputted and assigned. They're all wires. I'll show you in the code, but you know, breaking down, breaking out the tens, ones of each uh, counter. Um, and then I have a start stop register here. So I have a button that will. Um, basically it's an SR latch, you know, set reset. So start's going to set it, stop's going to reset it. And as long as the start register is good, then these, uh, can count. And I have it going to each one because on some odd occasion, like if you, if I just had it stopping this one, and then when you stop it, if it stops on 99 at every hundred Hertz, this, it's going to continue going. So, 
Um, I'll show you all this in the code, but I got the 100 megahertz coming in. I get transferred into uh, 100 hertz to drive this, and then all all these can, um, you know, are after that. Here's the uh, now this is the entire project. So here's that stopwatch timer circuit we just saw. Start stop buttons coming in. The BCD values going into seven segment control, and then the anodes and segments coming out. I got the same amount of segments, just eight for that'll um, drive each one as the anode but I got eight anodes now to switch through okay so now I'll get into the code here I'm in Vivado I've got a Nexus A750T project target language is Verilog here's the module hierarchy over here the constraints file I got them all up here I'll go through them so here's the stopwatch just brings in the 100 megahertz the reset button start and stop and then all those BCD values going out. Here, I'll go ahead and uh, instantiate some button to bouncing in here. So there's six registers, three for each button. I'll just bounce, uh, debounce, start, and stop right here in these two. Here's the start stop register, create a wire to connect to it. Here's the logic for that. Like I said, it's just essentially an SR latch. If we have the start button, we'll set it to one. If we have the stop button, we'll set it to zero. Uh, and then here's where I create the 100 uh, Hertz generator. So here's the formula for that. So I count up to that and then um, toggle the register reset when it gets to that, you know, same kind of Hertz counter you got before. Um, yeah, and then there's the wire that's tying to that register that gets toggled in here for the signals. Here's all the registers for the counters for the time values. So I'm using that clock 100 Hertz to drive the uh, second 100th counter, which is one 100th of a second. It's checking for um, if that start stop register or wire coming off the register is good. If it is, um, when it gets to 99, it'll go back to zero on the next 100 hertz. Otherwise it'll increment. And it's the same logic for each one. We're gonna check for the start stop register to be good. Now, if, if, if the previous counter is 99, we're going to check seconds counter. If it's 59, if it is on the next tick, we'll go to zero. Otherwise, we'll increment. The minutes counter depends on the one one hundredths of a second counter being 99 and the seconds counter being 59. Then we'll check that for a 59, roll to zero. Otherwise, we'll increment. And the hours depends on the previous three registers, sec 100, seconds 59, minutes 59. Uh, of course, the start-stop register as well. So I'm going to let the hours run out to 99. So this thing can run for 100 hours. Um, and then here's all the binary to BCD conversion for all the counters for the outputs. Going to the seven-segment display, here's where they all come in right here. And then uh, the clock, the reset, all those BCD values, the segments going out, and I call the anodes digit in here. Parameters for all the segment patterns. Here's the digit select now for when I had on the basis three, I just had four digits, but now I have eight. So I need to make that a three bit counter now. Excuse me. Digit timer can be the same. I'm going to have, um, well, in this case, I'm going to have an eight millisecond refresh period. Each anode or digit will be on for one millisecond. So I'm keeping the same counter as I've had before using uh on a previous seven segment display, I'm just incrementing the digit select by one bit. And then this area down here for digit select, based on each of the values, we will turn on a different anode just like we did before with the four, but now I have double that. So it looks like this now. And then the, the case down here for the segments is the same. I just have, like I said, double the digits now. So um, this is the one one hundredths of a seconds ones, that's tens, seconds ones, seconds tens, minutes ones, minutes tens, hours ones, and hours tens. Same logic for all for everything there. Um, here's the top. We got the clock, reset button, start, stop, segments going out, anodes going out, wires to connect the, the, um, the stopwatch that's driving the seven segment display right here. And that's it. Here's the constraints file from the Nexus A7. Change this to clock 100 megahertz for my preference. Uh, here's the buttons. Now it's, it's not doubled up in here like it is in the basis three. It's just one line. So here's the button for the reset, button for the start, button for the stop, segments, 
the anodes and let me go ahead and, and program it up I already ran all that bitstream and stuff just got to reprogram it and then I'll show you it working okay here's the Nexus A7 all programmed up with the timer I'm gonna go ahead and start it and as you can see it's running we got the one one hundredths of a second ticking seconds seconds will take minutes minutes will take hours I did have this thing running for about two hours to make sure that it would go through and work for the hours and it does um, but there you go you can stop it whenever time you want restart it up again if you want stop it reset it have a whole new timer going and uh, yeah there you go a uh, stopwatch slash timer on the Nexus A7 in Verilog. Thanks for watching.